Hi, this is Dr. Robert Yang. Welcome to my weekly talk. Today, I'd like to discuss uh, what is allowed in doing intermittent fasting well, and the way to do proper intermittent fasting. Well, number one thing, you need to go to bed before 11 p.m. Because during the time of 11 to 3 a.m., 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., it's your liver and all out of time. They need to detox. Your liver will make the bile, flush out the bile through the biliary tree, as well as the gallbladder contracting. It will flush out all the sludge and possible small stones. It will flush through the small bowels and cleanse your whole bowel. So this is a very important function. You got to sleep before 11. Uh, number two, drink your fluid. You can drink water. You can drink uh, black coffee, matcha green tea, especially the organic uh, coffee and organic matcha green tea. Those have uh, additional benefit with the theanine in there will calm your, uh, calm your uh, uh, mental, calm your anxiety, and also has antioxidant effect. Also increase your fat burn in the liver. Uh, you can allow, you're allowed to have lemon and lime juice. You can mix with water. Uh, you can mix with apple cider vinegar and make it a lemon or lime made. You can actually add salt into it. Salt, uh, best salt will be a Himalayan pink salt or a sea salt. And try to do a, a ancient sea salt. Those are the best for you. Uh, you. You're allowed to have cucumber flavor water. You can allow to have a fruit flavor water without eating the fruits of cucumber. So that's allowed during fasting. But don't worry about the salt. Add among a uh, copious amount of salt to it, so it will actually help you fast better, hydrate better. And definitely no artificial sweeteners. They cause a spike in your insulin, which is defeating the purpose of fasting. Fasting is to lower your insulin level in your body. So, for example, if you eat a Splenda, it's going to spike your GIP and GLP-1 hormones in your GI tract. That indirectly spike your insulin, make your pancreas make more insulin. That is going to prevent you from fat burns. During intermittent fasting, you want to burn fat. Uh, there's a, quite a few questions on all these uh, things, such as bone broth. Are you, are you allowed to have bone broth? Yes, if you want to just uh, lose weight and burn fat. Because bone broth has low calories, has amino acids and protein. Uh, if you do a bone broth, you will stop your hunger and make you uh, fast longer. People use bone broth to do a multi-day fast, such as 3 to 7 days or up to 14 days. That's allowed. Next one, salt. Of course, I told you to use salt for your coffee, for your matcha green tea. You can add it to your lemonade or limeade or apple cider vinegar. Very tasty, make it more flavorful and neutralize the taste. Can you use heavy cream? Uh, same thing as bone broth. You can do a fat fast with only fat. Heavy cream only has fat, does not have a protein or lactose in there. So you can use it as for fasting. What it does is that you prevent, you knock out your hunger. But you only should be using only one teaspoon at a time to add it to your tea or coffee. And do not eat more than that, otherwise too much uh, calorie. You're taking one step backward and 10 step forward. Next one, coconut butter, coconut oil. Yes, you can use that if your purpose is to lose weight, uh, also fat loss or reverse diabetes, but not for autophagy. Because any calorie will actually slow down autophagy. Autophagy is a term used for uh, self-eating, that means your body eat away the dead tissues or damaged tissues. Therefore, you're allowed to do that if your go goal is to burn fat and reverse diabetes type to lower insulin level. Can you use olive oil? Yes, you can use it. It's the same thing as heavy cream and coconut butter and oil. You can use it for fat fast, only fat. As, as you know, fat does not spike your insulin. You can use it to lower your insulin. But you have some calories, so you can decrease the fat burn a little bit in the longer term. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.